Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. This is our final episode for 2024, and as we look forward to the new year, it's time to talk crop planning. On this episode, I'm joined by Jonathan Zettler from Field Walker Agronomy. We're going to talk about why it's so important to know your soil when making crop plans and making input decisions. What's the yield potential of a specific field? What are the soil tests telling you? Is there variability in the soil across that field? What about water and topography? And then there's always input costs and crop prices. There's lots to consider. Here's my conversation with Jonathan Zettler. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, it's great to have you back on the Soil School. Thank you for inviting me, Bern. It's it's great to be back. Hey, now, um, you're having lots of conversations with your grower clients about 2025 crop plans. Um, there's lots of decisions to be made. I know everybody's going to be looking to sharpen their pencil this winter. Um, at this point, um, are we still trying to learn from the 2024 season, or are you know are we really focused on the next year? I, I would say at this point, there's certainly some data crunch. It's still going on. We're actually doing some of that today to uh, learn from 2024. But I would say for the most part, uh, workload-wise, the focus is now on 2025. And uh, 2024 is uh, in the rearview mirror and the check's cashed and we're moving on. So <laughs> Now you say, um, you know, a big part of the conversation is now, you know, focused on yield goals and yield potential. You know, what's the distinction? So it, in my mind, yield potential is kind of a productivity rating for uh, maybe an area of the field or, or um, entire farms or fields that you might be farming, whereas a yield goal might be um, an expectation on what you think the, the farm could do at some point. So you could, you could probably rank one, we'll say qualitatively, and the other one quantitatively. So yield goals tend to be more of a quantitative thing in terms of the farmer gives me a number, whether that's 200 or 250 bushels of corn kind of thing. And then qualitative wise, it might be a low, medium, high in terms of productivity that we think it might be. And and we might stick a numerical value on uh, what that area of the field might do in terms of trying to make management decisions. But um, at the end of the day, it's it's a bit fluid and has a range of outcomes. So, What about, um, I guess, the question of, you know, what's the best way Jonathan, to align yield potential and yield goals. You know, when it comes to planning a strategy uh, for 2025, you know, how important is it to know your soil? You know, different fields, different farms. It, it, it's pretty much paramount. And quite frankly, I can't do my job if I don't know uh, what your soil is. And uh, otherwise, we're kind of shooting in the dark or playing with averages. And um, certainly... Uh, when we're trying to manage when you have a sharper pencil or playing with averages maybe doesn't work so great at times so starting with the soil test uh is, is a great way to do that and um in my case i'm working with a system that soil tests different landscape positions to help um manage some of that so you might have areas of the field that are more responsive to um, adjusting fertilizer rates and having um, that yield potential number there can help drive some of those decisions along with the soil test numbers. So that's kind of where we're at um, today as, as far as this conversation goes. Now, when, when working with your clients, you mentioned at, at Field Walker Agronomy, you use SWOT maps, you know, soil, water, topography maps. And, you know, maybe a more, some more thoughts on what specific information you're looking at here and, and how does that drive, you know, the input and the management decision. So what we're trying to do with this mapping process is characterize different areas of the field and how they behave from a yield potential standpoint. So, and then we uh, soil sample those areas separately. So if I could uh, kind of describe it as an index system in terms of field productivity zones would probably be the best way I, I could describe it. And it takes into account um, topography or, or landscape position along with uh, water availability. So why is water availability so important for yield potential? Well, um, particularly in a crop like corn where they're fairly thirsty plants um, when it comes to um, needing water at critical times, especially during grain fill, 
being able to sort out those areas of the field that are able to supply more or less of that um, can help drive those fertilizer decisions and, and making sure that we're applying um, what you're hoping to meet as far as your crop plan goes. So that's that's kind of um, how we're using yield potential and the soil test data and, and marrying them together. And then the question becomes a bit of an economic one in terms of how much do you want to spend or chase to uh, achieve that absolute yield number that you may be hoping to see on the combine monitor at harvest. So. Now, those maps are going to give you some, you know, some some options from a, from a strategic perspective, um, especially, you know, variable rate seeding. Talk about that. So with, with variable rate seeding, we're able to match uh, those seeding rates to the historic, historical productivity um, in some of those areas and manage also for seed mortality. Majority of the clients I'm working with where we're using these maps tend to be on tiled ground. Seed mortality maybe not as big of an issue, but, but uh, those really high productivity zones, especially in a crop like corn, we can probably push them a little bit harder and add some additional bushels without much additional cost and then those areas of the field maybe economic wise um, seem to struggle a bit they tend to be maybe a little bit lower yielding or handicapped a bit in the yield potential department because they're on a knoll and water runs downhill so um, while we can maybe pull back on some of the seeding rates in those areas uh, when it comes to corn and try and maintain yield while reducing cost is kind of uh, the name of the game and in, in some of those areas of the field so mm. um, i would imagine you could do the same you know application when it comes to fertilizer rates across the field right so when it comes to fertilizer it be, especially nitrogen in particular it becomes more of a crop response conversation so because nitrogen is a mobile nutrient um and you don't want to apply excessive rates necessarily it's not free and typically in a corn fertilizer budget in particular, it's one of the, the largest inputs that you're going to be applying. You want the right rate on, so you don't want too much. You don't want too little. And um, some of that is going to be driven by what the soil can supply and what the crop needs. So you kind of have two components to it. You have the soil supply piece and then you have the, the crop uptake piece. And I feel that the maps that I'm working with today do a great job of defining what that could be and um, haven't processed all of the nitrogen uh, response data um, that we have put out, but um, it's, it's really interesting seeing how based on landscape position, certain areas of the field actually perform better with less inputs in some cases um, when it comes to nitrogen and, and others need more. So. On average, it's, it ends up being close to maybe what you had been historically putting on, but we're putting it in the field where the crop's going to respond to it. Let's talk uh, specific crops. You know, you know, corn is king. Um, when you're looking at the map data and information that you have, or soil test, um, you know, what are we looking at specifically? You know, are, are there any uh, things that you see there that uh, you know are really going to drive a strategy? You know, any highs, any lows, any issues, any opportunities? So probably the biggest thing is if the grower has historically been flat rating or the farmer has been flat rating the, the inputs on the field, especially for longer periods of time, there's probably an opportunity to um, move those inputs around when it comes to phosphate and potash within the field. And um, in some cases, depending on how much erosion has happened on the, the upper parts of the field or the knolls, um, they might be those areas tend to be extremes. They're either very low or they're very high. And without soil testing those areas separate, you don't know kind of where that's going to end up. And uh, if they're already very high and your soil tests um, are coming back high, but the, the yield just isn't there, well, it's probably an opportunity to maybe apply less in some of those spots in some cases and then uh, reallocate those nutrients where the crop can use it better where you're not limited maybe by water and, and um, sometimes some of the best yielding parts of the field tend to be some of the lowest testing just because you're not um, applying enough relative to what's being removed so Hey, Jonathan, um, final question. That is, you know, we're in December now. Um, we've got a, well, we have the winter ahead of us. Um, you know, what's your message 
to growers, to clients, as we move forward here? You know, um, is it a is it a case of you know keep thinking, uh, keep it simple, and keep the conversations going? It, yeah, I think I really think it is in terms of um, you essentially have three, maybe four options when it comes to making a fertilizer recommendation, and you need to kind of decide uh, which one of those you're going to pick as you go down the the crop planning path. And uh, in my mind, those are you either apply crop removal, uh, you apply crop response, which in some case might end up being the same as crop removal, depending on the soil test value. Um, in some cases, it might be a build program and maintain in terms of where you're kind of at. And I guess the fourth option, not that I really promote this, would be to mine um, some areas of the field. So as you're going through um, some of these management decisions, it becomes a, a question of kind of what uh, what is your end goal relative to your yield potential and your yield goal for the field, and, and how do you want to manage that? Mm. Well... Um, some great insights, Jonathan. Uh, field Walker Agronomy. I encourage everybody to check Jonathan out um, online um, on X and uh, on the website and stuff like that. Lots of uh, lots of insights to be had, sir. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Always great to have you on the Soil School. Yep. Thank you for the invite. Always appreciate the the conversation.